Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for Proof Strategies, Direct and Contrapositive Proofs. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. By the end of this video, you should be able to prove an implication using a direct proof and a contrapositive proof. You should be able to state the converse and contrapositive of an implication, and you should be able to prove an equivalence. Our motivation for today is we're at the point now where we can make mathematical statements and we can express ourselves mathematically, um, in particular using the symbols for all, there exists, and, or, implies, not, and if and only if. But now we want to see what does it mean to prove these types of statements? We can make them, but we want to actually check that they're true. Our proof, first proof technique for today is how to prove P implies Q directly. We'll see a couple different ways today. Now, our main proof technique is if you want to prove a statement of the form P implies Q, you assume P and you deduce Q. When we say assume P, we mean assume it is true. And when we say deduce, we mean by a series of logical or justified steps. You start with P and you get to Q, that's the idea. Let's see this in action with a following very simple theorem that's meant to illustrate this proof technique. So let x be an integer. If x is even, then x squared is also even. So we see that it's an if-then statement. So we will start by assuming the if part and proving or establishing the then part. Our proof starts with assume x is even. That's the if part, the, the p part of p implies q. And now we'll make a series of logical justified steps to get to Q. This is a definition unwinding proof. What does it mean for X to be even? Well, we've seen these kinds of proofs before. You use the definition to get an integer K such that X is 2K. And then when you square that, you get that X squared is two times 2K squared. So then since K is an integer, so is 2K squared. So we've shown that X squared is even. And this is in fact our Q part, we've deduced Q. Again, notice that we start with P, we start by assuming P explicitly. We make a series of logical conclusions and then our final conclusion is Q. So that's what it means to prove an implication directly. Another technique is to use what's called the contrapositive. So if we want to prove a statement of the form P implies Q, you can instead prove the logically equivalent statement not Q implies not P. How would you do this? Well, this is still an implication. So you would start by assuming not Q and then deducing not P after a series of logical justified steps. This proof technique is allowed because we know that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. In general, if two things are logically equivalent, you can prove uh, one or the other. It doesn't matter. They're both fine. Let's see an example of this. So this theorem says if x is an integer and if x squared is even, then x is even. So it's slightly different from the previous one. So we prove this by contrapositive. So we start by assuming not q. In this case, the conclusion was x is even, so not that is x is odd. This is a little bit of a lie, but we'll fix this um, in a later video. Now we go through a series of logical steps to get that not p. This is going to be very similar to the previous argument. If x is odd, there's an integer k such that x is equal to 2k plus 1. You square it, do a little bit of algebra, and then you end up with, by definition, showing that x squared is even. Sorry, x squared is odd. I'm going to leave this algebra to you. Um, it's not uh, anything new for us. We've seen these kinds of proofs before. But the point is that we showed that x squared is odd. And that is, in fact, the negation of p in our statement. So the structure of this proof is you start with not q, do a series of logical steps, 
and then deduce not p. One question that is surely coming up now is, how do you know what technique to use when you're trying to prove p implies q? This is a great question, and I've tried to uh, leave this all to the end until we've seen all of our different proof techniques, but I think it's a question that comes up already and people want to know the answer to it right now. So I'll give you a partial answer now and then a more complete answer later. As an exercise, pr try to prove the previous implication, which is x squared even implies x even. Try to prove that directly and not by contrapositive. You'll see that it's much harder. Um, and if you can express in words why it's much harder, then I think you'll see why um, you might want to use contrapositive versus direct, or you might prefer direct over contrapositive. We'll get to a more detailed answer to this question after we see proof by contradiction. One comment before we leave this is the contrapositive is often confused by students with the converse. To remind you, the converse of an implication is Q implies P. And generally, it is not logically equivalent to P implies Q. So if you're trying to prove P implies Q, you can't instead prove the converse. Let's give a visceral example of why that doesn't work. Consider the statement, if I get an A, then I will pass. This is definitely not the same as, if I pass, then I will get an A. So please don't confuse these two things. To show you visually, the original statement is P implies Q. The contrapositive is not Q implies not P, which is equivalent to the original. And the converse is Q implies P. You're just reversing the arrow. This is not equivalent. Finally, let's take a look at equivalences, which is a special type of um, statement that comes up fairly often in mathematics. Recall that P if and only if Q is logically equivalent to the statement P implies Q and Q implies P. If you want to think about it geometrically, it's like you can get from P to Q and you can also get from Q to P. So you can get from one to the other and back. Since this is logically equivalent, this tells us how to prove this type of statement. If you want to prove P if and only if Q, you need to do two things. You need to prove P implies Q, and you need to prove Q implies P. So you'll have typically two separate proofs. Alternatively, because we know that Q implies P, uh, we, we can rewrite it and something logically equivalent. So this gives us an alternate proof technique for proving P if and only if Q. You can prove P implies Q and you can prove not P implies not Q. So formally, this is proving the contrapositive of the second part. But rather than think about it technically, it's helpful to think about it um, in, from an intuitive point of view. The first one is saying, if P is true, then Q is true. And the second one is saying, if P is false, then Q is false. So this is really what if and only if feels like. Let's go to the example that we proved. So we've actually proved the following theorem. If x is an integer, then x is even if and only if x squared is even. We proved an if and only if. What technique did we use to prove this? Take a moment to think about it. We use the technique of showing p implies q, and then we use the contrapositive to show not p implies not q. So we use technique two. Oftentimes in math, you'll see more than just two things are equivalent. You'll have p if and only if q if and only if r. And you'll often need to prove that all three statements are equivalent. There's many ways to do this. The underlying idea 
is that you want to show from any of the three, you can get to any of the other three. So one strategy is to prove these four statements. P implies Q, Q implies P, Q implies R, and R implies Q. The first two will tell you that P and Q are equivalent. The third and fourth will tell you that Q and R are equivalent. There's actually a simpler way to do this, though. A different strategy to prove that all three are equivalent are to prove that you, can, that you have P implies Q, Q implies R, and R implies P. You should check on your own that you can get from any of the three statements to any of the other three statements by combining these three implications. As an exercise for you, prove the following theorem that there are many equivalent ways to represent a rational number. So the theorem is, let x be a real number, the following are equivalent. The first statement is, there is an integer p and an integer q such that q is not zero and x is p over q. The second statement is, there is an integer a and a natural number b such that x is a over b. The third statement is, there exists an integer c, and there is a natural number d, such that x is c over d, and c and d have no common prime factors. These are three equivalent ways of defining a rational number. Finally, let's take a moment to reflect. What is the difference between a contrapositive and a converse? Create an example of an implication and construct its contrapositive and converse. If you have taken a linear algebra course, you have seen a proof that 10 or so statements are equivalent to a matrix is invertible. What proof strategy did they use in that course? Thank you very much and have a good day.